Well, <laughs> you might be wondering what I'm doing in my wife's backyard, but I just thought it might be rather interesting because we've got um, a lot of followers that have got a hive or two that they're just thinking of, or we've got some people thinking about having some bees in their own little yard. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know. Normally you see me running around with my suit and checking out my bees and doing all the stuff that happens in a bit of a commercial sense. So the wife graciously offers us up her backyard to have a trial run to see whether we can get her asses stung off. So I thought it'd be an interesting little exercise to see whether if you put a beehive in your backyard, whether they decide to not like you. But so far they're pretty friendly. And I think going forward, they will get more friendly. And I thought it might be interesting to do a little bit of a side shoot so it, on a small scale when you're doing your own little beekeeping. I mean, there's a lot of interest in flow hives these days and having your own bees and doing your own thing. Me, personally, I still reckon you're better off to have a real hive. But you know, then you can get amongst it. You've got to pull your flow hive to bits anyway. So you might as well pull this to bits. And they're getting honey off a of honeycomb. It's pretty piss easy without an extractor anyway. And hell, it's good fun to get covered in crap. So if you're in suburbia, and you're thinking about getting a beehive, just remember that you're only allowed to, I think you're only allowed to have two beehives in a suburban backyard, and you don't want to stir up your neighbours. So the first thing you need to do before you even get near a beehive is find a water source that they've got. We've actually got a water fountain just over here that they seem to love to go to, and that seems to work really fine. Because once the girls get orientated, they'll keep going back to the same water source. So if you haven't got a water fountain or a bird bath that you keep filled up, get yourself a pot and get some floats in it, so I use some, um, what are they called? They're those tube things that you put in your swimming pool. I cut them up and use them for floats. What are they called? Bloody, I don't know what they're called, but anyway. Pool like... noodles. Pool noodles, that's what they're called. If, unless, you're a, unless you can um, break out the champagne and good excuse to have a few notch-ons because you, know, you need the corks out of the champagne bottles and you put them in your pot so the girls have got something to land on. Anyway, anything that floats, and a water source, very important. Number one thing that they need to do. Number two thing you need to do is decide where your neighbors are. So is it, you know, we've got a bit of a fence so they fly up and out, out of the yard. Because they'll generally track, they'll generally track in a certain direction. So you want them basically so they're up and over the neighbor's house. And once they're out of your yard, no one will know that they'll just add to the wild bee population and no one will know they're your bees anyway. And the other really fun part about being a beekeeper is you get a bit you get a bit interested in what the bees like to eat. They really love a bit of lavender, so we plant we're, well it's gonna be a hedge here eventually, but anyway. And but different lavender bushes are seen to be different attractive. This particular lavender here, the girls seem to really love it. They can get a bit of nectar and a bit of pollen out of it. It gets you interested in what flowers the bees like. So it's another really cool thing about beekeeping is you do a bit of research and not every flower is bee friendly. I mean, a bit like we were showing you not so long ago, that sometimes flowers are designed to attract flies, not bees. So not every flower is correct, but it's all good fun. It's part of the adventure of being a beekeeper. We're out for our first uh, hive inspection. So we're gonna check out the brood box. First thing you need to do though, of course, is to light your smoker. Um, so apparently we're going to give you an educational lighting of the smoker video. If you're a follower or longer on, on this show though, you'll realize that sometimes lighting the smoker is not quite as simple as you think. You can buy special little um, smoker things from the beekeeping shop if you're just messing around in your backyard. So you can just use any sort of fuel really. I mean, if you've got pine needles are kind of cool, although they do block your smoker up after a while, as you can see here, <laughs> which is a bit of a drama, but they work fine or you can, get some hessian sacks they are pretty cool if you've got them laying around you've got to get old school hessian because the new shit just sort of burns real quick but anyway so we'll chop a little bit in here pack it in a bit so then we just light up a bit of paper now make sure you don't set fire to anybody or yourself for that matter well, that's a bit of a worry <laughs> well you don't want to get carried away with your putting the next bit of sticks in or leaves or needles or whatever. <laughs> Otherwise you'll just put the dolly thing out. It's really just like an upside down campfire really. <laughs> Oh, 
What do you reckon, Lightning? Well, that should be heaps for a while. We're only going to do one anyway, so... Time to get your bee suit on, so you don't get too stung by the ladies. <laughs> Unless you're super brave. I've got super friendly bees. Or... I don't know, haven't got a bee suit. Go and buy one. See you in the yard. <laughs> So, we're in your backyard, and you're up for your first hive inspection, and apparently the cameraman tells me this is meant to be a bit more educational, so if you're a regular watcher, don't get disheartened, we're actually going to teach you something proper today, so come along and check this shit out. So if you're thinking of getting a beehive, before the ladies arrive, good idea to get yourself a hive tool, a smoker, and a, I usually like a full length suit, but you can get a, just a jacket or just a hat or trousers and do that. Anyway, I like a suit because it sort of makes you feel like you're all cosy and hopefully with your new at this gig, you'll feel a bit more relaxed in a proper bee suit. But you know what? Make up your own mind, but that's my recommendation. If you'd like to, though, if apparently we had some requests that people wouldn't mind a hive tool to, a hive tool with the Bush Bee Man logo on it, which is kind of cool. So I don't know, put an order in and, um, how does that work? Is what it called pre-orders, isn't it? Because we had a guy on the Q&A the other night and he said maybe we could pre-order some hats because that's a bit complicated to get them too. So if we get 20 pre-orders for a cool Bush Bee Man hat and maybe 10 orders for some hive tools. Anyway, enough for the shameless plugs. We've got to give the little ladies just... Now don't get carried away with your smoker. You don't need to get too silly. Just a little bit, just so as they get distracted. Something else to remember is the warmer the day, the less bees are going to be in your hive. So um, we're just doing this because it's a lovely balmy day here and we're waiting for something else to happen. So we're going to show you how this is done. So we just pop the lid off here. Yeah, a little bit. So you just lift that up. Just, and just try not doing too much banging. Banging is a bad idea when it comes to bees. A little bit of puff of smoke under there. Just wait a minute. Wait for a little bit for him to think, what the hell is that? There's a fire on. And then you take your lid off. Now there, this is just up here in the top. So the ladies are building in the roof because some, now yeah, that's a good point. Some slap bloke hasn't put the top bit in here yet. <laughs> we'll show you that at the end. The ladies are being quite busy in here. Now this is just your honey super, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna check that out on the way past. This is not really what we're here to do, but <laughs> we're just gonna pop a frame out. See how far along, they're building along here. So they're built from the middle out, which is what they normally do. Just gonna see if any of this honey's capped, which will be a good sign if it is. No, it's not, because it's not that much weight in it yet. So they're just starting to cap their honey across the top. And there's quite a lot of unripened honey in here. Don't go harvesting your unripened honey, because that's a bit crazy. The stuff will just ferment, and it's a bad idea. Mind you, if you were going to eat it straight away, it's still pretty cool stuff, but it's not not if you want to store it in your honey jar. This is when they get exciting, because we're about to get into their real home. Up here, they're just working. So we're just going to lift this. This is, just, this is your super box. Now, if you've got a flow hive, obviously, I haven't got a flow hive, so I don't know, but there's obviously some way to get the top off, I hope. Because even if you've got a flow hive, you're still meant to look in your brood box. And check out what's going on. Just slip that off of there, pop that on your lid. Give it a little bit of a puff. So we'll just pull off your queen excluder, nice and gently so they don't get too psycho. They're packed in here. <laughs> it's a good idea to start with your second frame in. Because then, then that doesn't disrupt, because generally they've stuck this outside frame to the box. And you can probably see here how they've built in this little gap. So you'll make a hell of a mess if you pull that one out. We'll just clean this little bit of top off the frames. Now you don't want to be, you want to be a bit careful that you don't, if that's massive amounts of honey, you will be a little bit careful because you don't want all the honey running down here and the ladies get all stuck in it. Even though they like making honey, they don't like blooming swimming in it. So you want to get your little hive tool underneath the edge there and just lever that up. So lever that up, get hold of there. And then you're going to lever this side up so you can get your finger under it. And then nice and slowly, just no need to be in a hurry when it comes to beekeeping. Hopefully you've picked a restful Sunday afternoon to be stuffing around doing this. 
and it won't be such a big panic gone. <laughs> there you go, so this is basically just a bit of a honey edge, a little bit of brood on the corner there. Yes, she is. Look at that. Just found the queen, but she's just running through there. Oh, they don't like me pointing at her. <laughs> so I've just spotted the queen, which is a good thing. Now, if you see the queen on the frame that you've got in your hand, do your damnedest not to crush her, because that's a really shit idea. <laughs> Very important to check the frames, even though they're not normally, the queens aren't normally on the outside couple of frames, but they can easy be, which is we've just discovered her right here. Just be careful that you don't put your queen out on the ground and then she gets left behind, because then the bloody poor ladies have to start again. And the other very important thing we're doing at the minute is checking for the queen, if they've got any queen cells, which is an indication of them getting excited to swarm, especially since we've seen the queen. So you want to just do that. But what, So what we might do, since she's on this frame, we might just take the next one and then we'll put this one back in because you want to leave one out so you can actually do the job. So we're going to pop that one out because we don't want to lose her because otherwise oh, it's a bad idea, especially if you've spent money on her. Although she might be not that long for this earth. <laughs> right, so here we go. Now there's the proper brood part. But you can see she's got a beautiful laying pattern going on here. This is all the brood, capped brood as they call it, not cat brood. <laughs> and you're just making sure you're looking at the edges to see whether she's still laying out. The girls are actually making a bit more room by eating up the honey that they've stored on there before I put the super on. And you're looking for queen cells and hopefully we don't find any of them, but I've got another hive that I can show you a heap in. <laughs> and so then you go. If you just blow gently on them, they'll move out the way because they're not real keen on our breath not that my breath stinks that bad so we know the queen's not on this particular frame so we're going to sit that around the back out the way mm -hmm. just make sure you don't crush everybody so you just leave her standing up on a bit of an angle and then that leaves you a gap so this just leaves you a nice gap so then you get your tool and you just leave her that one that way just leave it so just like a pivoting action just just so as you push it away rather than ripping it up. They've quite often built a bit of a bridge between the frames. So you want to push it into the opening space. And then if you're really cool, you can just lift it up with your fingers and check this frame out and see what's going on. And you just work your way across all the frames like this. Looking for queen cells because it's spring. Looking for the brood and see if it's got some young eggs going on. Which is kind of cool it has. she has got some nice pattern happening. Which she should, because she's a proper hybrid girl. Like, look at how nice and relaxed they are. They're all just chilling out. You could probably do this in your t-shirt if you were really crazy, but still. <laughs> and then you're just making sure you haven't got, yeah, haven't got foul brood or mites or chalkboard or any other crap that normally shows up. You'll have to flick you some actual shots because we haven't actually got any, thank goodness, to show you. But they look quite happy. Oh, that's probably one other thing that I would find that all your literature that you read always says that the queen bee is the biggest bee in the bee box and when you first start looking at your bees you're going to see some oh you're going to see some drones these guys haven't got very many drones so anyway you just pop your frame back in they all look really happy happy in happy in bee land remember that you've made your gap over here so push all your frames back where they lived nice and slow so the ladies have got a chance to get out of the way and then you're back over here and you might as well check your honeycomb in this last one this is the gap where you started so the frame that you've got resting outside you want to put back there oh that's a honey one that's full of honey look at that oh yummy 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 oh there's a drone there when you first start looking at your bee box you get confused because they say the biggest bee in the box is the queen and then you see heaps of these big fat boys running around you think holy mackerel so really if you're thinking about it I reckon the queen is better described. She is the biggest one in here, but she's actually just because she's longest. So she really looks like a crazy bee crossed over a termite, really. <laughs> well, not, a, yeah, long termites, you know, the long, are they called termites? Yeah, the big long, anyway, the long, she's got a longer tail. But she's not necessarily, when you start looking first, that you would say these the biggest in the box. You just got to remember, because we actually took the next one, didn't we? Because that first frame actually had the queen on it. So you want to try and put them back where they belong. Now you know you ladies out there when your hubby says to you, where the hell are my socks darling? 
and you go, they're in your sock drawer. But if you happen to put them in his jock's drawer, then he will never find them, will he? You can't find them when they're in the damn right drawer. So <laughs> the girls like to have shit back where they know it is, because I think they're all, I'm not 100% sure, and I'm sure some scientists would be able to tell me, but I think they're orientated to work certain areas. So it's just nice to put them all back where they belong. So we'll put our queen excluder back on. Now all the field bees are coming back and going, hey, what's going on? There's a bloody bit of excitement. There's a bush bee man in our, in our house. Anyway, and then you just lift your... Now this will be quite heavy if it's full of honey, this, this bit. Try not to crush too many people. These are all the bees that are coming back, bringing in their stores. After the Q&A the other night, we had bloody questions going everywhere and we couldn't possibly answer them all in the time we had. Hell, we ran over an extra quarter of an hour as it was, trying to keep up with it all. So we got to thinking, maybe we should put together a web training series that you could view. So if you'd like to do that, after you've watched the video, put it in the comments and say, yeah, we would be interested in joining up to the Bush Bee Man video series training. I don't know what we fucking call it, but anyway. <laughs> Put the lid back. Try not to get too many smashed up little bees. While we've made a mess, I'm just going to go and get myself a little bit of netting and lay on the top of this box so that they don't stick the lid down quite as hard. So there's lots of different ideas at the top of the hive. You can use a bit of old lino, you can use a, I guess, a small placemat. Me, I've just sort of headed towards this bit of fly wire. This is just fiberglass fly wire, so it's nice and soft and pliable. And I just sit that on top of the frames, just sit it on top of there. Heaps of different options. This I just know the themes to work. The ladies can sort of block it up or regulate it. The main option is to stop the jolly lid sticking to the top of the frames. If you're in a wooden box or one that has a bit more humidity, the idea of the mat is to stop the moisture dripping off the roof on top of the brood box, on top of the girls and giving them a chill. But I don't know, as I said, <laughs> there's so many different ways to do this beekeeping gig. It gets, it's, well, it's like us humans. We've all got different ideas. It's probably not 100% right way, but this is the one that works for me, so... Who knows? <laughs> There's this stupid advert down here. It's like, oh, what a feeling. Go oh, 100. Apparently, we're at 100 episodes. How fucking amazing is that? Thank you, all you Patreon supporters, subscribers, clicker honorers of your YouTube channels. Don't forget to share us, and never know, we could go com completely out there. <laughs> so, cheerio from the Bush Bee Man. Oh, interesting we should be at 100 episodes. Well, I guess it's not interesting. Maybe I'm a bit endearing or completely insane, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but it's interesting, I was thinking the other day, I was driving through the, hello kookaburras, I was driving along looking at the gum trees flowering and all the different bottle brushes. I didn't actually realise how many di different bottle brushes and flowers and flowering plants and I really didn't look at nature as much, even though I'm a farmer, I really didn't take that much attention about nature, but being a beekeeper, you suddenly start getting interested in nature and you start realizing the, the impact us humans are having on our little darling girls. And you, I guess I'm almost becoming a greenie in a point. I don't know, is that like, I'm definitely becoming in love with bees. So that's a bit of an interesting thing. And I reckon, yeah, it's making me a better person looking after them. So there's just a bit of side thought from the Bush Bee Man. Don't tell me wife, but I borrowed a drill. Hello bees. Might be shit, but might be good. Don't tell me wife, but I've gone and broken her drill. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Thanks for the honey. Thanks for the honey. Oh dear, we got royal visitors here. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. And might be good, might be shit. Don't tell me, wife, but now I've gone and lost her drill. <sighs> well, we've been fuzzing through all the stuff and the entries we've had for my imitation. We're not sure, but might be good, might be shit, but right now I reckon it's pretty bloody fantastic. <laughs> <laughs>